The task manager has changed very little when it comes to Windows servers, and I can get there multiple different ways, such as right-clicking on the task bar and choosing task manager. Now, in Windows 11, the task manager has changed significantly, but in Windows Server, it still has a lot of the same features put in the same places. One of the things that's missing from Task Manager on a Windows Server is the ability to search for a specific area. And Windows 11 actually now has that. However, we have a lot of other great features that we can use for Task Manager. Task Manager tells us all the different tasks that are going on on our server. I'm going to right click in these columns and you can see you can add additional ones. I'm going to choose the process ID for it. So all the process IDs are showing up and I can even sort by process ID number or CPU or memory and I can see the various different process IDs. Now process ID is going to come up again in a little bit so keep that in mind. Now I'm going to go to where it says performance. Performance is where I usually go when I go into Task Manager because I want to see what bottleneck could be causing a problem making my server run slower. Now, in this case, you can see that not a lot's going on. It only has 2% or so of my CPU currently in use. And under memory, I've got 32 gigs. I've only got 10% in use. And in Ethernet, I can take a look. I've only got around 30 kilobits per second of traffic going on. But I can choose any one of those, and it'll tell me what's happening. And even though sometimes it looks like it's spiking, it only means that if you take a look at the top right, that it's spiking with the current graph. If I went ahead and sent a large packet someplace, you would see the graph change as it did here. So it went from 100 kilobytes into one megabit per second, and now it looks like it's doing less, but it's actually doing more. It just changed the graph level. And after a few seconds, you can see that it dropped down to the 500 kilobits per second range. So it definitely is starting to go down. Also take a look that there's send and receive packets. The top line is the send and the bottom line is the receive. You can also see the CPU go up when you open, say, an application. I'll open up my DNS manager and I'll click around a little bit, do some things. Now I'll minimize. And you can see that the CPU has gone up a little bit. I didn't really tax it there, but just gives you an idea of what happens. Once you've seen that the CPU, memory, and Ethernet are not a problem for you, you can go to the next tab, which is the Users tab. Now, the Users tab will tell you who's logged into that particular server or computer. Now, nobody else should be logged into this. So I've actually caught uh, hackers and other people who should not be in the server by going to this user's tab and seeing that other people were logged in. And in some cases, it's because there was a weak password and hackers got in using that way through some open internet port. So this is really an important place to look. Now you can see all the different applications and executables that are being run simply by me being logged in to the server. Some of these are just part of the system and others are ones that I opened up particularly. So if I go to details, now we can see the executables that are running. All the different executables run by all the different services, all the different applications, this, the operating system, all those different things. You'll see that the process ID matches the process ID under the processes tab. So for instance, if I chose the service host local system, you can see process ID 1032. When I right click, I can choose to go to details. Details is the details tab I was just in. So I'll click that and look, it highlights the executable that that process is running. It's the exact same process ID. Now I'm going to right click again and you'll see it's also tied to the services. The services, if you look at the top, that's the tab all the way to the right. So if there is a service tied to this particular executable, some of them will be, some of them won't, then you'll see that it will show up here. So when you're troubleshooting, you can take a look at Task Manager and say, hey, this particular service has stopped. Now I can find out which executable it's tied to and which process is tied to. So in order to fix, say, a stuck service that's stuck in the stopping or starting phase, then I can simply go over to that related details, right click, and I can end that task. And what that will do is it will end 
that stuck service. Then I can simply go ahead and right click and restart it. Let's take a look and see if we can do that. So I'll right click, end that task, end the process, go back, and you can see now that it's stopped. Now I'll just go ahead and start it back up again. And it gets a new process ID because every process ID is going to be unique. And I can go back to details and I would be able to see that executable running once again. I use Task Manager to both find and fix bottlenecks as well as find and fix stuck services and executables. And I think you'll find it just to be as useful for you as well in your position.